hi friends welcome to joy fido international my name is joy fido and it feels so good to be back welcome on board okay so this is one of the talk shows that i normally do with you friends where we talk about life generally we talk about what's happening to us we talk about our state of mind and how they all connect to make us who we are so um i'm really excited to be here chatting with you today and i said it feels good to be back because i've been away for some time and for various reasons i've been away and this is what i want to really talk about today but before we start i just want to show you something exciting the holy bible and i've shown you that because what i want to do today is i want to commit this discussion into god's hands and i want the holy spirit to take control of this so that i'm really able to touch somebody's life today that's why i'm here the reason i said i inspire you is so that we can look at what's going on in our lives and see how we can make it better and i did say um a new beginning for me because so much has happened um i think within the last time we had a nice chat like this was when before we had uh the election in the uk called brexit where we chose to brexit exit um europe and then of course in the us you guys have had your election where you've had a new president in waiting and um, all over the world there's so many things going on there are still wars all over the place and things are happening and there's a new movement now people are beginning to call it nationalism where um so much of hatred is being preached around and people are really struggling and suffering and things are going completely wrong and this is such a trying time because we all need to look inwards and see how we can protect ourselves against what's going on out there um, it's a new beginning for me because I have had my personal share of tribulations and so the title of today's talk is really about um, making sure you achieve that peace of mind that you desire so much. We all desire peace of mind and without peace of mind everything can go wrong. Everything can go wrong. So. I had all these thoughts flowing in my head and I needed to understand how to deal with the issues I was dealing with, which we'll, we'll mention a few of them. Um, but when I started getting a clearer focus and my mind became a lot clearer, I realized I have to share this message as well to the rest of you because I'm sure there are people out there who are going through very difficult times with all this things going on in our world today and then of course your state of mind is seriously affected and you're looking at how you can you know get to that point where you are a bit more relaxed a bit more at peace with yourself so protect your peace of mind um against spiritual attacks is really the title of this chat that i'm having with you and um like I said earlier, I experienced it. And that's why I think it's so important that I share it with you. Because um, typical me, I cannot push myself forward. I can't do things if I haven't shared the knowledge I have. It's like emptying yourself. It's like um, um, you naturally want to you know, go and release whatever is in there to clear your, your mind for another thing. And that's that's the kind of person I am. So if I if I find a solution to something, then I suddenly feel I have to share it with other people. And so that's where I am right now with peace of mind, seeking peace of mind, and um, aiming to make sure that you are clear. Once you're clear, your life goes forward. And that's where I am. So, um, in our mind is where everything that we are lies you've heard people say um 
your thoughts become your ideas and your ideas become your actions and your actions become your life that's how easy it is that's how easy it is so that place called your mind is actually the kitchen of your life that's where the food is made that's where who you become comes from so this is the one place that needs to be protected this is the one place i know i've done a few videos in the past where I mentioned you have to make sure you guard your peace of mind or you guard your mind with everything you can but I don't think I really understood what I was saying then because now it's become very clear in my head what I meant and I have had to deal with this in a very very practical way and that's why I, I come here saying to you um, a new version of me or a newer me or, or, or being excited to be here again because a lot happened to me within the months of August and now I'm looking at December and I can tell you it has been a spiritual attack it's been attack upon attack upon attack upon attack and I started wondering um, is this what other people are going through and yes everybody out there is going through one form of attack or the other now the, the honest truth is anything that engages your mind it has to be right for you to feel right and if something comes into your mind and takes over your mind you have to be careful what that is in order for you to move forward so when these things come in various forms and suddenly you see that is no longer you in control and and you find yourself in various state of mind this is where the ideas are being planted this is where the thoughts are forming this is where you are then following that thought with an action and then that action then reflects who you become that place needs to be protected that's why I'm saying protect it to gain what they call peace of mind and I talked about the Bible because the answer to everything we deal with spiritually comes from there and I've talked several times about the various persons that we are we are the spiritual we are the mental we are the emotional we are the physical they all add up but first of all we are spiritual that's the very first part because even the Bible said, um, God created man from dust and then he breathed life into him. He breathed life into him. So you see when we die as well and you hear something like from dust to dust, what happens when we die is the spirit has moved on. That life that God breathed into us has moved on and suddenly we are left with that dust, which then becomes dust to dust because then that that physical gets buried and then we got that person has died and I prefer to say someone moves on moves on in the sense of the spirit has moved on so that spirit it's so important that it is what makes us alive it is it is what the living is the spirit is what is the living and so if your spirit is then affected that you cannot find peace in your mind then there's a problem and that's when you hear of spiritual attacks because if someone physically gives you a slap or hits you with a stick or whatever you can see it you can feel that pain and you can say oh you're hurting me but when someone when you get spiritually attacked people out there don't see it they don't know what's going on in your state of mind and this is when you hear people falling into depression this is when you hear people falling into all kinds of issues and you hear people have become mad because it is a spiritual thing that you cannot see and so the most important thing is you need to protect your mind from all these attacks and I was having these issues where everything was happening and I actually I know I did some videos on them as well um, my personal relationship with my husband was going crazy 
I was having um, relationships going crazy with my relatives and my friends and, and things were just going wrong and sometimes some of us out there think we are so strong I've had people I chat with and they go oh yeah I don't I can take that nonsense and I just move on and and you know you hear all kinds of people giving you all types of advice my question to such people is when you give this physical image of being strong and you have moved on and you're doing great what about your mind are you at peace with yourself do you go to sleep and, and and fall off like a baby and you're not even thinking about anything because trust me that's where the war actually happens it is in your mind that that war happens i've heard people say wars are fought and won in the mind because that's where that spirit is dealing with issues and i'll give you some bible passages to to, to really confirm what we're talking about spirits now this is what i tell people who listen to when i explain these things you see the same way we have the spirit of god coming into our life and supporting us to create good the same way evil spirit exists if anyone wants to sit out there and lie to you yeah all that nonsense they're talking about there's no evil spirit that person is just lying because evil exists just like there's good existing, so is evil. And if you think you are refrained or you are um, covered that no evil can get into you, you need to think again. Because there are Bible passages that confirm there's a passage where um, this man, Jesus came across him and he was possessed by uncountable number of evil spirits. And when they saw Jesus, they cried out and said, Please, we know who you are. Please, what can you do with us? Don't just throw us away. Please put us somewhere. And Jesus cast them into pigs or swine, that the Bible called it. And then they ran into the sea and drowned. That was a human being possessed by uncountable number of spirits. Even there's a passage that has it that when Jesus rose from the dead, and Mary Magdalene was one of the people who came to see him. He had cast seven devils or spirits from Mary Magdalene. So these things exist all around us. And you will not know when they creep into your life. Okay, so some of the things I mentioned about um, protecting the mind. It says, from the mind comes all things of life. That's a past Bible passage. Proverb 4.23 So you need to protect your mind because your mind is what creates your life. Read it up. And um, it says in, in Matthew 8 verse 28 to 34 This is the story that I just mentioned about how Jesus cast the devil out of this man. That they all entered the head of um, a swine or pigs and got into the sea and drowned another one is about uh, Ma Matthew 4 verse 1 again where someone has been tempted by the devil and if you think you're so special and so holy that the devil doesn't attack you remember when Jesus was when Jesus uh, um, um, had uh, uh, 40 days of, of fasting and what did the devil do when he saw Jesus was really hungry? He said, oh, cast, cast the stones into bread. You are, you are God's son. You can do that. What did Jesus say? Get thee behind me, Satan. Because these things exist. They constantly exist. And the biggest thing you need to remind yourself is you want to make sure that you cover that place called your mind so that when these thoughts are creeping in because they come in the form of thoughts and when i was having my spiritual attacks a friend of mine we had to sit down and had a good chat and luckily her husband again is very very versed in the bible and very very well led by the spirit of god and we had a sit down and we had a good chat I went there with my husband and he explained everything and he said 
none of us are, are perfect. There is no human being that's perfect. Anybody that thinks they're perfect, they're lying. Because even the Bible says it. We have all come short of the glory of God. And so for us to, to now sit and claim that perfection, then we are lying because the Bible doesn't lie. But if that being the case, then you then wonder, at what point do we get these attacks? He made it so clear for me where he talked about this man that was possessed by, by this numerous number of evil. But he said, our mind, the human physical body, is like a house. And just the same way you walk into a house, and a number of you can walk into a house and occupy the house, the same thing exists with us. So spirits are out there looking for who to occupy. And why is that? Because they don't have a physical form to operate from. That's why they're spirits. They do not have a physical form to operate from. And for someone like me who thinks, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm going, okay, that makes sense. Because we are also taken by the Spirit of God. So while you have people who say, I'm a man of God, I'm a man of God, so also exists the opposite. People who are working for evil. And I've seen a video where this man, I've actually bought his book, this man was working fully for evil, for, de for the devil. And he said the amount of evil things they were sent to do, constantly sent to do, they exist among all of us. And what they do, they get into people which this evil does, the spirit of evil, get into your being, which is like your house now because you're physical and so he needs someone to do his job for him. The same way God needs us to do his job. Because what you need to remember is, I just said this to my kids this morning, why were you created? That's one question you need to ask yourself constantly. And as far as I know, the reason I was created is because God sent me on a mission. And that's the same thing with all of us. We were sent on a mission on this earth. But what then goes wrong is, while we are on this mission, evil equally is ready to do his own mission. I don't want to go into all the, the details of how the demon came to be, because people who are Christians know that story. How he was a fallen angel from heaven, and so his whole purpose on this earth is to destroy God's work. So, you are wholly made in the image of God. And so you've been made to come here for a good purpose. Go and do this for me, my child, because God does not physically walk on this earth. In Genesis, God did. When he was walking with Adam and Eve, he physically came on earth. But after all that went wrong, God decided, okay, I'll put a demarcation between my children and myself. And so he then sends us all in human form to come and continue his work. Then we come here and then we start this battle, which is evil says, okay, you're here to do God's work. I'm going to see how you're going to achieve that because I'm going to make sure things not work out for you. And then you have this huge thing going on. And I know for sure because I know lots of my friends who have been completely pulled back by evil. Pulled back. You will see someone with such amazing mission. You can see a child or you can see a person who is so great. And then suddenly things start to happen. You start wondering, but she was never like that. He was never like that. The weird thing that you need to know is it comes in all forms. So evil focuses on distracting you from your mission. And, and I actually have a Bible passage for that. Um, I'm trying to remember what where I wrote it. Um, I think John 10 verse 10. It says, uh, it says um, the thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy. And that's the job of evil. Because I had to ask myself, how does this work, really? How does this work? Why? Because its sole purpose is to engage your mind. And once your mind is engaged, 
you completely lose distraction. I mean, you lose focus. You become distracted. And so I'm sitting now here from time to time. I'm chatting with you. I'm telling you things that are great for you and for me. Um, I'm creating all these ama amazing skills, supporting people who are looking for work and encouraging you to take up skills so you can provide for your family and yourself. And I'm doing all these things. And I know me. Because in my head, like I've told you a few times, there's so much more I need to do because I am so grateful to God for the amount of things He's put in me. I look at myself sometimes and I, and I just said, I haven't really come, I haven't become physically what is in me, in my head and in my mind. I know what I'm capable of doing. And so I gradually do things that I can do. Physically, things, events allowing. And then suddenly I get this attack where my mind was now engaged. Engaged as far as I know with ridiculous things. Things that don't make sense. When you really look back, you say, was that what my time? You know, arguing unnecessarily with people having distractions because someone it thinks the best way they can get your mind is to have an affair with your husband or your husband thinks oh yeah let me go have fun and and make friends with somebody else and then you not sit down and ask yourself but am i not better than that person or what is so great about that person that you are not thinking i don't you know so little things like that what is happening you are engaged you are taking away from your focus so the reason I'm telling you all this is because I know there are people out there who are experiencing these things. And sometimes what happens to me, I tell myself, when these things happen to me, again because I'm vocal and I could say things, when these things happen to me, they're probably happening for me, for me to share it, to bring it to your attention so you know what's going on. Because all the experiences I've had in life, I know they are not meant for me alone. They are meant for me to be able to be a voice for people who cannot speak about it. For people who think they are going through something that's shameful. I, I shouldn't talk about it. It's embarrassing and all of that. No. No, no, no. This is what is going on. These things happen to engage you. They happen to distract you. They happen to take you away from that mission that God sent you on. Because when you really look at it. Now what I say to myself and anyone who cares to listen. If whatever this thing is. Is not going to go with your spirit when it's over. And what I mean is when your spirit moves on. When oh yeah she's gone. Oh she used to be this and she used to be that she was this great person or she wasn't that great person whatever if whatever this thing is that you are engaging your mind is is not going to go with you then please don't even entertain it don't entertain it don't allow yourself to be distracted because like i said this evil that comes to kill steal and destroy is coming with a sole purpose to distract you and when I say they come in various forms, they do come in various forms. Because what happens most times is, you know when people say, my enemies are there. You know, you hear that all the time. I have so many enemies out there. They are all there, you know, seeking to destroy me. And No. Evil does not chase you from out there. Evil sits in your house and waits for you. It might sound scary, but it's true. Why? Because they use the most loving people that you know. They will, they, you will possess your husband, possess your children, possess your friends, possess everybody. And the reason I know this is real is because we read it in the in the Bible passage. He could talk to anyone. If he could talk to Jesus Christ, then who am I? They cannot talk to me. He talks to all of us. And this is where our state of mind is very important because it can only creep in your mind. 
And that's why I said it's so important that our state of mind has to be protected because it creeps in and then it uses you. And so sometimes you don't even know what you are doing. You don't even know that you have been used by something, something sinister. And so it will come through people that you love, people that are so close to you. And I say to people, I say, anything that takes your state of mind, your peace of mind, anything that comes after it, that's your enemy. You don't have to go out there to look for an enemy. That one that said he doesn't want to see me. That one that was putting something in my food. That one that thought I was I would not survive. No, they're not that far. They're right under your very nose. Because the minute they take your peace of mind, they have taken something from you. And so this is why this video is very important for you to understand that the main thing you need to do in your life is protect that peace of mind. And how are you going to be able to do that? Okay, so trying to explain the whole thing we're going through. And so your peace of mind is so important. And like I mentioned, um, evil will come in every form. In every form. It will attack your finances. It will attack your love. You will attack your peace of mind. You will attack your friendships, your relationships. It can go through anything, anyone. You need to be guarded constantly. And, and there's a song that really, really helped me. It says, onward Christian soldiers marching as to war. And there's another passage that says we, we, we fight against principalities and powers. We're not dealing with humans here. Because they will, they will have a human face. They will have human form. There will be people you know, people you love. And then they're fighting you in the spirit. That's what I mean by spiritual attack. Because when this person comes and presents whatever they're presenting to hurt you, and you react, and your state of mind has gone and you can no longer think straight. You may think, oh yeah, it was that person that did that to me. It's not really that person. That person has been taken over by these spirits in high places. Um, I think I've quoted that passage in the past, not at the top of my mind, but we, we fight not, we wrestle not against humans. We're dealing with spiritualities and principalities and powers that are in high places so how do we overcome these things how do we then get to that stage where we can find peace inside because the biggest thing that you could seek in life I mean sometimes as a Christian you you hear us keep hoping that one day um, because we're doing so much good uh, we're waiting to go into heaven. I don't know about heaven. I haven't been to heaven. And I don't know how many people have been. I think if you go on YouTube and type in people who have been to heaven and back, you, you hear everybody giving all types of testimonies. But I think it starts here. It starts right here. And here being that state of mind. Because there's a passage that says, except a man be born again, you, you will not see the kingdom of heaven. And what is being born again? Now being born again is like being a child again. And what makes a child? What makes you think this person is a child? A child has innocence. A, a child does not bear grudges. A, a child is amazing. Forgiveness. You see a child because oh, obviously I have kids. And you can tell when a child is slowly growing out of childhood. Because the minute something has gone wrong, with a child, they, go, they, they will cry in seconds and next minute they've forgotten that they were crying and they will run to you and give you a hug. But meanwhile, you probably were the one who upset them and they cried. And it's like seconds they've forgotten that that happened. That's a child. A child is so loving every minute is hugging the mom or hugging the dad or hugging the sisters. You know, you just, oh, she is so cute. She's a child. That's what we need to become in order to see the kingdom of God. But you see those of us who sometimes 
we are all Christians. We we carry the biggest grudge. We get so angry. We are so envious. We are so jealous. We, everything happens, and then we tell ourselves we are Christians. We don't even have Christ-like life because all of that is happening in our heart. So except we clean that heart of ours and that mind of ours to let go of all the pains, then it is a difficult task. Because then we are thinking, this is us, we are thinking, it's a mental thing that one day heaven will open and we're going to go into it and wow, then all our problems will disappear. It starts right here. So if you cannot create that peace of mind, if you are not a child again, where is that hope of waiting for that physical realm called heaven? So this is the time to start thinking now. So I want you to start thinking because what God said clearly is, we have all sinned and have come short of the glory of God. So he said we should come unto him. Come unto me, all ye that labor, all ye that are sick, all ye that have financial problems, all ye that have issues, anger issues, you know, friend issues, love issues, pain issues, whatever these issues are, come to God and he will give you rest. And you know my understanding of rest? Peace of mind. You will get peace of mind. And two major things God wants from us. Obey my commandment. Uh, there was a time because I, I, I have, I'm challenging myself to finish reading my Bible. Not every passage, not every page. But the interesting thing with my Bible here is it gives me it gives me options of how I can read and touch major topics. And then it also gives me option of how I can read the whole Bible. So again, because you, I am so busy doing so many other things. So I try, I'm focusing on the one that will give, give me things that I make up the major parts of the Bible. And, and so I got to Deuteronomy one time and I read it. And I tell you, I was in shock. I was in shock because... It all came together in my head. What is going on in our lives? It came together. Okay, so you might say this is Old Testament. But the, the thing that came out of it is, it was very, it was like an eye opener. In the sense of, God is telling us, this was Deuteronomy chapter 28. When you have the time reading. If you listen digi 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 i've got lost here now diligently to the words that he gives you and obey his commandments he lines out all the amazing things he can do for you because he created you he has all the answers he owns the heavens and the earth what could possibly be your problem finances love children whatever God has all the answers. So all he's asking is you diligently obey his commandments. And of course, praise him. Praise him. Thank him for all he has done already. Make sure you never forget and say, oh yeah, I, I, I did that out of mouth. No, none of us have that power to do anything. Waking up in the morning with that air that you breathe, the, the life that he breathed into us, it's an amazing Miracle is an amazing gift. And so everything that we are is from God. So remember to thank him. Remember to take all your issues to him. Remember to obey his words. You do that. Why would God leave you? Why would he leave you? You are his child. He created you. But now we don't listen, we don't do what God wants, we don't even thank him, we just carry on, we think we are arrogant, we are proud, we think we own it all. And then when it goes wrong, we, we run around, we say, God doesn't care for us. Read that passage and you will be shocked. It comes down to our, our, our ignorance, it comes down to our stubbornness, it comes to, down to our arrogance. And so we need to snap out and hand over. 
He says, come unto me, all ye that labor and are broken hearted. So how broken is your heart? Because mine was really broken. And so you have a heart that's broken, just take it to God and he will heal it. And when he heals it, that's when you then have what we call this peace of mind. This is what then creates that space that we call heaven before the physical heaven comes. Because you need to have it here on earth. You don't have to wait until you physically go somewhere. And so we need to create that here on earth. Peace of mind. And the only way you can achieve that is by obeying God's commandment and doing what God wants from us. So obeying God's commandments comes in so many forms. And um, there's a Bible passage, I think John 3, 16 and John 15, 9 and you know, so many of those kind of passages. He says, he says, um, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. This is where Jesus gave himself on the cross for us. He gave himself, he went on the cross and gave himself for us and died for our sins because remember we said it, all have sinned and have come short of the glory of God. We all have. And so we now come to God with all our broken heartedness and um, now we're lost. We don't know what to do because we know that there's one out there, evil, ready to eat, um, uh, steal, kill, destroy us. We also know that we're dealing with things out of our control, principalities and powers constantly in our face, constantly, dis you know, engaging us, getting into our mind and wanting to take control of it. So the only place to run to is to your creator. When you run to God, he says, but I gave my son to die for you. So come through him and I will give you rest. So that's where we are. And that's what I've done. Because I have been there and I've done that. I've, I've, I've done all kinds of jobs. I've set up my business. I've helped as millions, many millions, millions of people out there to set up their own businesses in their little ways and copy. Now we're in a time where things are getting even worse. People are preaching hatred openly and not ashamed of it and not worried about it. And this is why I say to all of us, evil exists and good exists. God exists. God created us. God is here to do his will to create a better world, but evil wants to come and destroy all of that. And I am a good example of that because I know how much I touch lives in my own little way. And then what do I get? I get attacks upon attacks and you know what was going to happen? It was going to completely stop me because I got to a point where I wasn't even interested in sitting in front of the camera because I had my personal issues to deal with. And I'm saying to myself, but I still have my issues to deal with. Why should I go and be trying to help somebody else? That's evil. That's evil talking. Because he's, he's engaging me in all, this, in all these physical things. He's telling me, look, that happened to you and that happened too. And look at what's happened and look at... And so all he was putting in my face were problems and problems and problems. And I never saw anything good. And I'm thinking, what is going on? And that was the spiritual attack. So... I know it happens because I have experienced it. So I cannot say to you now, that, oh, I read and I had a friend said and this person, no, I am a living example of what could have happened. And I could have been so distracted and forgotten about all the amazing gifts that God gave me, which I know I haven't even started to use half of what I know. So it's for you to wake up. Wake up from whatever it is that you're dealing with right now. Wake up from it and run to God. Run to God because that is what has cleaned my mind out. And trust me, once evil knows that you know, it will run. 
And another thing you will then realize is anytime he's trying to snug his little way back into your heart, you go, no, 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 sorry. I know you now. Don't bother. It's not going to happen. I'm not going to entertain you. Knowledge is power. And I say it all the time. Once you know what you're dealing with, you know how to reinforce yourself to deal with it. And the only person that evil fears is that name, Jesus Christ. Because he knows that Jesus gave himself for us. Devil did not give himself for anyone. So if Jesus gave himself for you, he knows that the minute you hide under Jesus, you're protected. And that's what's helped me. Because now I can wake up and be ready to get on with the things I have to do. And I feel good about myself. And all that, that cloud that was sitting over my head is gone. I want the same thing for you. And that's why I decided to come and say this out to you in the open. So you now start looking into your life. And I mean look into your life because it exists in every form. If you want to chat with me about this, if you want to email me about this and tell me, this is what I'm thinking, Joy. This is what I'm thinking, Joy. I will entertain you and I will chat with you. And I will write back to you. But this is the real world we live in right now. Hatred is everywhere. Anger is everywhere. Pain is everywhere. Financial distress is everywhere. Everything is happening. And all of this is to distract you from the focus that you've been sent. A mission that you've been sent on. Because evil wants to take over the world. Look around you. And so if people who have the spirit of God in them run and hide like it was beginning to happen to me, I would have forgotten about coming to sit here with you and chat with you. Then it's won. Is that what you want? I don't want evil to win. And that's why when I spoke with my friend Susman and he explained all his understanding to me, it then hit me that yes, this is what has been going on in my life. And now I'm ready to deal with life head on. Because that is the only way. You have your mission to come and achieve something here on earth for God. Do it. Don't let anything stop you. Don't let anything stop you. Wake up to that reality that all these principalities and powers that are hanging out there looking for who to stop. And what I found out is always it attacks the strongest of us. Because he knows that your mission is bigger. So he will now come in all force. So it's for you to be strong to overcome. And the only way you can be strong to overcome is to go to God and talk to Jesus. And hand over all your problems to God. And say, take control. And that's what I've done. So I hope I've been able to share something with you today. Um, feel free to email me, joyawardofbreathing.com. Um, a lot has been happening our Instagram is really picked up and with the training um, where we work with the braids and weaves and all of that and we get amazing views on that side but of course so many other things that I've been doing my fashion line with the African fashion taking off um, we're working on throwing them out and talking about the various sizes we have in stock and the various designs that's coming and um, um, African food is another thing or rather I call it Nutri Life. Again we have um, an Instagram account on that where I'm beginning to show you different things you can put into your body to give your body a healthy boost so that you can cope with physical things. So there's a lot happening and, and, and all of that is to the glory of God. I thank God for everything he has put in me and I'm so excited and if you if you could see the back here we have this beautiful poster talking about the joy Fido international talk show um and what we wrote there is inspiring you to success that's the whole idea of joy Fido international um to inspire you to success because i know for sure that in as much as you have all these amazing skills and all this amazing amazing knowledge and you know you're willing to do as much as you possibly can from what I've exp explained in this video, evil can come and take all of that away. Because that's his job, to kill, steal, and destroy. And so when he steals all these ideas of you, it destroys you, it kills you. And when we say kill, it may not be physical death, it could be just spiritual death. So once he does all that, everything that's 
has been locked into your hand by God, which I know he, he, he locks a lot into my hands, all of that will disappear. So you want to snap out of all of that. And this is where Joy Feeder International is really going to come out there and support as many people as possible. Because there is so much going on. There's so much going on. I don't even want this one video cannot answer it all. But even like back in Africa, where I come from, you get so many people telling you they go to church, they go to church, they go to church. But trust me, they are not living anything like Christ like life. And because of that, the glory of God is not shining through yet. So we want the glory of God to shine down upon us so that His will on earth will be done. That's where we're coming from. And that's what Joy Feeder International is going to be picking on and seeing how we can gradually go into our minds and reset it. Because that's where, like I said earlier, that's where evil resides. It will not physically stand in front of you and say, look at me evil, but it creeps in from your mind. And that's where it does its worst dangerous acts. So if we can reset our mind back on track to God, and start doing the things he expects from us all the skills we have it already all the knowledge we have it all the things we are meant to do is already there and you know like 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 the the man of god mentioned to me all the glory you're looking for is coming your way but you are the one stopping it you are the one stopping it because you have blocked away all these evil things which you don't know but that's what's happening evil has blocked it and so because you're engaged he calls his self-imprisonment. I think I did a video on that as well. You, you've, you've imprisoned yourself. You've stopped yourself from seeing good things. All you're seeing is negative things. So when we reset our mind, all of that will start flowing back. So I hope to hear from you. And um, if you enjoyed this video, as usual, subscribe. Um, share it with your friends. And I know this can touch somebody's life as well in a positive form. And um, stay in touch with us because there's many more coming your way. And uh, we thank God for his um, inspiration in our lives today. We thank him for giving me all I've been able to share with you today. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thank you.